Okay. You done? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 92. And for this one, I go over pretty much like five days of playing poker at Run It Up Reno. But it's mainly about the meetup game that Andrew and I had there. And uh, then I go over kind of one of the, the start to one of the biggest downswings that I've ever had. Uh, so I think it's a pretty cool episode for a lot of reasons. I think you guys are going to enjoy it a lot. But before we get into it, I've got an announcement to make. Last video, uh, we did a free roll contest for um, PokerCoaching.com. Uh, for the Big 50, we're giving away two entrants into that and two one-year memberships to uh, PokerCoaching.com. So without any further ado, the two winners for that are... Kieran Appleby and Simon Baker, congratulations. You guys will be receiving a email shortly. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. It's my fourth day in Reno at the Pepper Mill. Coming off an $1,100 cash game loss from two days prior. Took yesterday off to work on a video, so I'm looking forward to getting back after it and hopefully I'll book a win. Night is already starting off well because as I'm getting some footage and walking in, I see Hall of Fame meetup gamer, Brian Stafford. Yo, hey Brian, how are you? There he is. He's from San Diego, but he's been to more meetup game locations than anyone else. The event tonight is held in the high limit section of the poker room. It has six tables and an enclosed area towards the back of the place. We get a nice group of people to fire in some 2-5, no limit. It's a $500 cap. That's what I buy in for. And I'm not interested in wasting any time. I pick up pocket aces within a few minutes. We're under the gun and we open to 15. The hijack calls. He might as well just give me all his chips now. We can move on to the next hand. I guess he doesn't want to do that. He prefers to drag the pain on, play this hand out. Small blind also hates money more than just about anything. Comes along too. Three of us are going to the flop. It comes jack 10, six with two hearts. Small blind checks. Seems like a good enough flop to bet. I make it 30. The hijack makes the donation. Small blind isn't feeling as charitable and he folds. It's heads up. The turn is the four of spades. It's unlikely that the hijack would have just flatted with anything that was beating us on the previous street since there were so many draws out there. And if we were ahead on the flop, we're probably still ahead. We need to keep betting because there are potentially a lot of bad rivers for us. I bet 65, the hijack is not going away. He makes the call. The river is another 10. All the draws miss. There shouldn't be many 10s in my opponent's range, so this is not too bad of a card. I have two options. I can check and try to induce a bluff from a missed draw since the hijack won't be able to call a bet with those holdings, or I can bet around two thirds pot to target a jack, try to make it seem like I'm bluffing with a missed draw. I go with option number two. I slide in a bet of 150. The hijack tanks for a long time, then he finds it in his heart to reach down deep into his pocket and make one last $150 donation to the Brad Owen charity for lanky white guys. He makes the call. He gets some bad news when he sees that I've got aces for the win. He gets more bad news. When he finds out later that I don't qualify as a 501c3, his river call is not going to be tax deductible. We're up a couple hundred before picking up pocket queens under the gun plus one. The under the gun player limps in. I raise to 25. The cutoff calls, the small blind calls, and the under the gun limper calls as well. Four of us are going to the flop. It's 10-6-4 with two hearts. Checks to me. I bet 60. The cutoff and the small blind both call. The under the gun player folds. Three of us see the turn. It's the ace of hearts. Small blind checks. I check with the intention of calling if the cutoff fires. He doesn't, he checks back. The river is another four. Small blind checks. I likely have the best hand and I consider betting small to get a call out of a 10. Instead I check, the cutoff checks. I turn over the queens. Small blind says that it beats his 10 and the cutoff doesn't show. We scoop the pot. Two hands later we're dealt ace 10 of diamonds in the big blind. The button limps in, small blind raises to 15. I call for 10 more, the button does too. We're going three ways to the flop. It's ace jack five rainbow. We've got top pair with some backdoor draws. Small blind checks, I check, and the button checks. The turn is the nine of diamonds. Small blind leads for 25. We've got a flush draw to go along with the pair. I call, and so does the button. The river gets us there. It's the king of diamonds. We've got the best hand in the world. Small blind is concerned and checks. I'm less concerned and bet 70. The button calls, the small blind folds. I show the goods, the button shows that she had king nine offsuit, she river two pair. We win another one, we're already up 565 and we're running great, which is not how I was running the previous session that I played. I switch over to lose a $20 bomb pot at Brian and Joe Stapleton's table. Pretty cool that out of all the places in the casino to lose money, Joe chose to do it at our meetup game. Next I pick up ace jack suited in the hijack, under the gun limps in, I raise to 20, Joe calls on the button, 
big blind calls and so does the limper. We're going four ways to the flop. It's king four three rainbow. We all check. The turn is the nine of diamonds. So we pick up a flush draw. The big blind checks. Under the gun bets 40. Folding is out of the question, so I can call or raise. I take the aggressive approach and I make it 130. My line doesn't make a ton of sense. I'm basically only repping kings, nines, or potentially ace king. Joe folds and so does the big blind. The under the gun player calls. The river is an offsuit 10. The player checks. I don't think this particular player would fold a king to me and I can beat weaker diamond draws. I check back. The opponent rolls over 6-5 offsuit for a busted straight draw. Six high is not gonna win it. I turn over ace jack to claim 100% of the pot. Joe is in disbelief because he folded what would have been the winner. <laughs> oh man. He's over there. He's at the drum table. Oh man. He, 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 I had 10-7 of diamonds and I folded thinking that I was going to be up against bigger diamonds a lot of the time. Later I pick up king jack offsuit in the cutoff, onto the gun plus one limps in. I go ahead and limp as well. Joe calls in the small blind, the big blind checks. Four of us go to the flop and it's king nine eight with two clubs. Under the gun plus one leads out for 20. I call, the small blind and the big blind fold. We're heads up. The turn is a seven. This time the opponent bets 60. This dude keeps potting it. I get the feeling he's strong and can't think of many hands that he's betting for value that I beat other than maybe king 10. I'm confused and I don't feel too comfortable. My lane is down, man. The way they talk about the game, it was so good. You want to show the bluff? Show the bluff? I don't know how big though. The player had king five of clubs, so he had a king with a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw. He gets me to fold the best hand. It's bomb pot time. We're on the button with pocket queens. Each player puts in 20 and we go straight to the flop. Comes jack three three. Checks to me. I bet 60. Joe started the hand with 20 and it was already all in pre-flop, so he'll be getting to showdown. Middle position player calls and this concerns me. The turn is an ace. The opponent checks. I check back. The river is another jack, so I don't really beat anything. Middle position player checks. I check. Joe and the other opponent both have threes. They split it up with the middle position player winning all my $60. Jason Somerville then strolls in. It's cool to have him here. It's his birthday today. Also, David Sklansky makes an appearance. It's great to see him. I've got piles of Sklansky dollars that I've accumulated over the years. And I'd like to redeem them for actual dollars. That doesn't happen though. Rated GTO also comes by, and so does Kevin Martin and Grips, who is the newest coach over at PokerCoaching.com. Over at my third table of the night, I pick up Ace Deuce of Diamonds in the small blind. Cutoff opens at 15. The button calls. I bought the button for the next hand, so it's only 10 more for me to call, and I get to close the action. That's what I do. The flop comes Queen 8 6 with two diamonds. I check. Cutoff fires for 35. The button folds. I'm not going anywhere. I make the call. The turn is an Ace. I check, cut off bet 60. Definitely not going anywhere now, I call again. The river is a four, I check. Cut off gives up, he checks back. I turn over the pair of aces, that's good enough to win it. The pot is pushing our direction and we need to celebrate that with the official shot of meetup games. We have a Washington Apple, even Ashley Sleeth, who is an accomplished poker player and also Jesse Sylvia's fiance joins in on the shot. Good times. In this hand, we have queen jack of diamonds in the hijack. The under the gun plus one player opens at 20. He's an aggressive player who's been pretty active. I've seen him make some bluff attempts. I call, the flop comes, ace, 10, six, all diamonds. We flop the second nuts, the royal flush draw. Under the gun plus one, bets 30. I don't wanna raise and scare him off. I flat. The turn is the seven of diamonds. This is not a great card. The player checks. Concerned that if I bet, he won't be able to call with almost anything other than the king of diamonds. The next best flush after mine is the nine high flush. That wouldn't be very strong in my opponent's mind since the king, queen, and jack of diamonds would all beat him and they're not accounted for. I'd probably only get one street of value out of a smaller flush anyway. Might as well check back in order to pretend like I'm afraid of the board since I'm facing an aggressive opponent who tends to fire when he senses weakness. I do check. The river is the deuce of diamonds. Seems like there are more diamonds in this deck than normal. The player leads for 130. No point in taking any other action other than calling because I could be up against the king high flush. Probably can't get called by anything worse. I call, the opponent says that I'm good. We win the pot. We sing happy birthday to the man who had the vision to put the entire running up series together. Happy birthday, dear Jason. Happy birthday to you. Yeah! 
then we return to crushing people's tiny souls at the poker table. We're in the hijack with pocket kings and open to 15. The cutoff calls, the big blind calls, the flop comes ace queen nine. It's not the flop we wanted, we all check. The turn is another queen, the big blind checks, I check, the cutoff bets 15. His name's Chris, he's been to several meetup games all over, good dude. The big blind folds, I call, the river is a king, we drill an unlikely boat, I don't want to check and have this check through. I lead for 30. To my surprise, Chris raises to 75. He doesn't have much left behind. I'm beating everything except for pocket aces and pocket queens, which Chris shouldn't have, so I jam for 195 effective. I'm in. In advance. All in. All in. <laughs> thank you. Kings For real, Thank you. Okay, here's the thing. Nice. Jack turns around. Nice. 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 Always fun to hit a card that gets you paid. A few hands later, we're in another $20 bomb pot. Flop comes ace 10 4 rainbow. I look down and I've got ace king offsuit. Strange when you pick up a real hand in a bomb pot. Checks to me, I bet 65. Folds to the under the gun plus one player. He calls, we're heads up. The turn is a six. The opponent checks. I bet 125. That's enough. The player folds and shows king queen of clubs, so he had a gutter and a backdoor flush draw on the flop. We do another $20 bomb pot shortly after, and the flop is queen 10 8, all spades. We look down and see ace 9 with the ace of spades. We've got all kinds of potential. Checks to the hijack, he bets 75. I put in the semi bluff to 300. It's gonna be very tough for anyone to get involved without a monster hand. Folds back to the hijack, he shows queen 4 offsuit and throws it in the trash where it belongs. The run good continues, and it's never, ever gonna stop. Till the next day and then it's gonna develop into a 7K downswing, but we'll talk about that later. It's still tonight, and I've got ace-queen offsuit in middle position, I open to 15. Small blind calls, so does the big blind, we're going three ways to the flop. It's queen seven deuce, with two clubs, we've got top top, and a backdoor flush draw. Both opponents check, I bet 20. Small blind calls, then so does the big blind. The turn is another deuce, this is a great card because it makes it even less likely that I was up against a set on the flop. Both players check, I bet 75. Small blind makes the call. Seems like he probably has a queen as well. The big blind folds, it's heads up. The river is a six, the flush draw bricks. Small blind surprisingly leads out for 125. It's a pretty small bet. Looks like he's trying to get the showdown cheaply. It's not very much that he could have the way the hand was played. It has me beat. Most of the time, the best he'll show up with is ace queen also. I put in the raise to 300. It's not a very large raise because I don't want a hand like king queen, queen jack, or queen 10 to fold. If I made it 400 or more, the opponent could potentially lay those down. The player tanks for two minutes and 50 seconds. The longer he thinks, the more I want him to call. Eventually, we hear it. Call. It's a tournament. We turn over our hand, the player lets his go. We win one big final pot to close out a fun session. Stack, get some more monster. After eight hours and 15 minutes of poker in which almost everything went our way, we rack our tower up. We got him tonight, man. We ran about as good as we could have run. Won $1,525, which is awesome, but I feel like that's not really the whole story of doing these videos. Um, I've run real great on the videos. I've run pretty well overall this year, but there, there have been plenty of losing sessions that just haven't been captured on the vlog. So. Before this video, I was down maybe $900 or $1,000 from running up Reno. So anyway, uh, cool to win this. I think I'm only up like a couple hundred dollars on this trip so far. It's day three, and I'm gonna be firing in some tournaments. So if I, if I don't hit those, if I don't cash in them, there's a good chance I'm gonna have a losing week and a losing trip, and that's how poker works. You know, you take calculated risks, and uh, for me, firing in these tournaments and playing these cash games on the side. It's all like a calculated risk. So we'll see how it ends up. It uh, did not end up well. We'll get into that soon. But first, I just want to say that all the Running Up members and staff are really great. 
Maybe the lone exception of Spraggy. He seems fine, but he refuses to play tournaments unless he can sit right next to his poster. It's bizarre to say the least. If you sit at the same table with him, presumably next to his poster, he just tends to ramble on about how much he loves Liverpool and relishes the days when Gerard was there. It's strange. He also insists on leading large groups of people down underground tunnels in which he has no idea where the hell he's going. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Tournaments didn't go well for me, but the one highlight did happen when I got it in three ways pre-flop with pocket nines versus king queen and Spraggy's pocket deuces. And I busted this guy. This is the best. What a dream. Six. <coughs> what a joke. Happy birthday, Spraggy. You'll notice that all the clips from here on have the camera vertical. That's because I wasn't planning on putting these on a vlog. They were shot for Instagram, but since I lost so much cash money, I thought it was important to show what triggered one of my worst downswings ever. This tournament is a small buy-in, but it's really one of my best showings out of the several that I played. I stacked someone soon after that spraggy hand with pocket kings. Then as blinds increase, someone shoves with a short stack and I call with king jack suited. Turns out I'm in great shape since he has queen jack of spades. Flop comes out and I'm safe. It's 8-8-4 rainbow. Unfortunately, the turn gives my opponent a flush draw and then he drills it on the river. All of a sudden, I'm somewhat short, and then the small blind shoves and has me covered while I have ace nine offsuit in the big blind. I call, I'm glad to see he has 10 eight of diamonds. I'm even more glad to see an ace queen four flop. The opponent will need runner runner to beat me, and the turn is the king of diamonds. Don't do this to me, man, come on. The river is the seven of diamonds. I get beat back to back by backdoor flush draws. Excuse me. Good game. Okay, Two hands I play in a row. Poker is cruel to me. I head to a cash game session later that night, and I'm already getting torched before Jared, who is mostly a 5'10 wild man, transfers over to our 3-5 table and straddles for 20 in the cutoff. I've got Jack-10 suited under the gun plus two, under the gun plus one limps in for 20. I assume he has a decent hand that ordinarily he'd be raising to 20 with if it hadn't been straddled so big. I just flat, the button calls, the cutoff straddler is last to act since it hasn't been raised, and he makes it 120. The button calls, under the gun plus one folds, we're all pretty deep, so I call. The flop comes queen nine nine with two clubs. We flop the straight flush draw. I check, the cutoff only bets 100. The button calls. I could just flat, but I played with the cutoff a decent amount and know that he could have all kinds of random hands. I prefer to take a more aggressive approach and try to take it down now since I'm out of position and currently only have jack high. I raised to 500. The cutoff jams for about 800 more effective. The button folds. I can't get away from it, I call. The turn is another nine, it's a terrible card. The river is the four of clubs, so we make a flush, but it's not good enough. The cutoff has nine six offsuit and drilled quads on the turn. No, it's not on a blog, man. It's on Instagram. Wow, hey. Well, it ended up making the vlog because it was the start of a giant downswing. I lose over 2,500 that session. Then the next day, I'm not even planning on playing much poker, but I realize I have zero better things to do with my life than hop in the $1,100 bounty. I somewhat late register, which is not a great idea for a bounty tournament, and I walk in still tilted from the big loss in the cash game the night before. In the first hand, I get it in with top top on the turn, with 40 big blinds to start the hand and a three bet pot preflop, and I lose to an older gentleman's pocket queens. That was one that, had I been in the right mind, I probably could have gotten away from. Now I'm even more tilted for losing $1,100 after one hand. Can't go out like that, so I re-enter for another $1,100. I'm seated at a new table, and I pick up pocket kings in the small blind. Blinds are still $300, $500 with a $500 ante. The button opens at $1,200. I three bet to $4K. He shoves for over $20K effective. I call, turns over A7 to diamonds. We're in great shape, looking to double up. We run. Okay, go for it. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's fun. Losing every way possible. The last three times I've gotten it all in preflop, the opponent has made a flush. Must be nice. So on this day, I'm already stuck 2,200 in tournaments, and the night before I lost 2,500 in cash. Things have taken a quick turn for the worst. I get stuck right away in a huge uncapped 510 session. I'm in for 4,500 total. I'm down 1,800 before picking up 8-7 suited in the small blind. We're playing seven-handed. Rec player limps in under the gun. Under the gun plus one, raises to 50. Hijack thinks about three betting and then just flats. We're all super deep and I'm stuck piles so I'm not gonna be folding. I call for 45 more. The limper calls, 
four of us see the flop, it comes eight, seven, deuce with two hearts. We flop top two pair. I check, the under the gun player checks, under the gun plus one, bets 150. The hijack raises to 450, it's heating up in here. I put in a re-raise to 1100. Folds back to the hijack, he just flats. I have 1500 left, he has me covered. The turn is the ace of spades. I've got no other option other than to shove. That's what I do. The opponent calls. My heart is in my stomach. The pot is 5,560. If I win, it'll be the biggest pot that I've ever won. And if I lose, I'll be stuck 6,700 on the day alone. It'll be the biggest losing day of my life. We'll just do it once, I guess. I like to go once, yeah. Sure, sure. I assume my opponent would have gotten it all in with me on the flop if he had a set. So I imagine he has something like a pair of aces with a flush draw. I'm praying the river is not a heart and doesn't pair the board. I can hardly watch this. You guys just tell me what happens. Nice Holy shit, I can breathe again. It's a huge swing for me. Originally when I saw the river, I thought it was the deuce of spades pairing the board. I imagined that I lost until I heard him say nice hand. I almost said, did you see that the river paired the board? Didn't have any idea what he called me with other than maybe 10 nine of hearts. It wasn't until later that I looked back and saw that the river was actually a three. At this point, I realized that this is the biggest pot that I've ever won, and I turned the camera the right way so I could potentially include it in a vlog. I narrowly escaped an enormous catastrophe. I cash out for 5,815, booking a win of over $1,300 on the session, and only end up losing around 900 on that day, which is pretty good considering I bricked two $1,100 buy-ins and was stuck 1,800 at one point in cash with the rest of my stack at risk. Next day, I fire in the $600 main event. I get caught bluffing, but drill a river. I run up a decent stack after that. Eventually, I pick up king four suited in the big blind and defend against a buttons open. The flop comes seven, four, three with two spades. So we flop a pair and a flush draw. We check raise, the button rips it in. We call, turns out we're up against bottom two pair and we're actually a favorite in this instance. The turn is a deuce. The river is a six. We don't improve. That was a massive pot that we lost that would have given us piles of chips. Instead, we're back down to starting stack. The good news is that I do get sat next to my Uncle John, who would eventually cash in the main event. My tournament life comes to an end right before the dinner break when I get it in and lose a flip with ace queen against pocket nines. Ultimately, I lost nearly everything that week in Reno. I was stuck $119 in cash games despite winning five of seven sessions. I really only lost in 2 5 though. 510, I did pretty well, luckily. On the tournament side, I got torched. I bricked each one, but at least I was given a free entrance into the main event for hosting the meetup game earlier in the week. Otherwise, it would have been even worse. And that was the start of my downswing. When I got to Las Vegas, I thought it would end. My first session, I picked up pocket aces in 510 and got it in against King's preflop for almost 1500. The dealer hates me though and put a king on the river. I lost to the opponent's set. I proceed to lose 2K my first day in Texas too. It happens, we'll talk about that a little bit in the next video, but I had a great time overall in Reno. There's more in the series than just making money in poker. Running up is also about getting hammered and singing karaoke. That's it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. I want to give a huge thanks to Run It Up. The entire crew there is awesome. They did a great job, and that's by far the most fun tournament series that there is. It's just very relaxed. You get to play with a lot of cool people. There's more stuff than just poker going on there. There's comedy night. There's karaoke night that you saw uh, in this episode. So if you haven't been to Run It Up yet, definitely do that. Also check out PokerCoaching.com. You can see the hand that I made a poker quiz out of on the site that covers um, it covers a hand that I played in a session that I'm going to make a vlog out of in the future. So you can get a sneak preview of that. I have a link down below in the description box for you to get a huge discount. Um, take advantage. And let's see, the World Series is coming up. I'm super excited. I've got kind of my plans all set. I'm probably going to play six to eight events including the main, and I'm gonna be selling action at no markup. It's just a cool way for me to interact with you guys. So if you're interested, then send me an email. You probably have to buy at least 10% of uh, a tournament buy, and I'm gonna sell them individually. And then um, I'm probably gonna decide like a day or two in advance if I'm gonna sell action for a particular tournament or not. But yeah, that's gonna be cool. I'm also 
uh, working with a company that I'll get into next episode, and we are going to do a giveaway. We're going to give away three $1,500 seats to the Monster Stack. Uh, it's going to be a free roll tournament, and that will be really, really cool. So there's going to be more details to follow um, in the next episode. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.